What's up everyone? So I get asked questions a lot on how we find these different dispersed camping spots. And I see the questions in my little camping groups day in and day out on how people find these different spots, like what's behind me. Um, people keep wondering what kind of programs you use, what kind of methods, what kind of process, procedures. I mean, you name it, the questions are out there. And there's a ton of videos out there as well on people explaining how they, how they find their spots and what methods they use. So everybody's different, obviously. Um, and we're a lot different than everybody else. I used to uh, work on a platform that was a mapping platform, so I really get into all this stuff when I work for NATO. It was called Interim Geospatial Intelligence Tool. So when I, when I use these programs, I really like doing that. Plus, I'm, I like IT, you know, information technology and computers and stuff like that. So, but anyway, um, I wanted to put a video together and walk through the sites that we use and the methods that we use to put that information together to compile that information so that we can find a good spot. And it, it doesn't work all the time because the way it is nowadays is like a lot of these spots are so many people here. I mean, the camping experience, I mean, I think it's like doubled, maybe even tripled since COVID. There's so many more people out camping. Um, so sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it pays off. Most of the time it pays off. So, but I wanted to show you exactly what we use to do this, to find these different sites, what programs we use to find these different sites. So without further ado. What's up everyone? This is Charlie with Doggone Nomads. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today's Sunday, the uh, 28th. Um, I wanted to do a video on how we find dispersed camping spots. There's a lot of questions out there. A lot of people have asked me. I see a lot of questions on the Facebook groups and uh, people are just curious what kind of platforms we use what kind of processes or methods we use and there's a lot of good information out there explaining that but every everybody is unique um, we're definitely unique uh, I travel full-time with six dogs uh, six rescues and I also own a business and I work full-time so definitely gotta make sure I find the right spots when I'm looking but uh before I start explaining all that let's kind of just define what dispersed camping is this video is not about established campgrounds, you know, RV sites, nothing like that. This is literally in the middle of nowhere, no water hookup, no picnic tables, no nothing. Just dispersed camping. So dispersed camping is camping outside of designated campgrounds, often on public lands with no fee. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for out in the middle of nowhere, no fee, no people, no people, no people. All right. Starting out, I use... Gaia GPS, iOverlander, Campendium, FreeCampsites.net, Google Earth, and I'll go to the websites, United States Forest Service and BLM, Bureau of Land Management. Let me go here. I'll, we'll start out with Gaia. I love Gaia GPS. We, I have the paid version, so it may look a little bit different if you have the free version. The paid version I think is like 40 or 50 a year. So, I mean, why not, you know? It has all these additional layers. I mean, you can even select private land and see who owns different parcels of land. It's pretty cool. So I've already done all the research for the next location, but let me back up and tell you where we're currently at. Currently at. We're at the Grand Mesa National Forest. We're about 45 minutes east of Grand Junction and about 45 minutes north of Delta, Colorado. And if you look at some of my other videos, my recent ones, you'll see the, the area. It's absolutely gorgeous. Like, I think they call it the land of the lakes. And my next location I want to go to is Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Mainly because it's kind of an established city that has a lot of good camping nearby. Plus, it's got an Anytime Fitness because I'm a member of Anytime Fitness. I can go there and work out a few days a week, go take some showers and all the other good stuff. So, I've already done the research to find those spots, but I'm gonna go back and start from the beginning to kind of show you what I do. So let's go to Gaia GPS. We'll type in our next location, Steamboat Springs. Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Okay, I have, like I mentioned earlier, I have the upgraded version, the premium version. So first thing I'm gonna look at is public land. And that's going to consist of any kind of public land, such as national forests, 
national parks, BLM land, etc. Steamboat Springs is here. Because we're going north, ideally I want something north of Steamboat Springs, but it's not that big of a deal. As long as I'm within a driving distance, that's fine. So if you're wondering what this shade of green is, you can go here to that layer, or the public land layer, excuse me, select it, and you can see the legend down here, and it's going to pop up. So the majority of land around Steamboat Springs is U.S. Forest Service. And real quick, I'm, I talk fast, I apologize, and I'm all over the place because I got so much information in here I want to share with everybody. Because I, I don't want people to have to struggle when they're looking for spots. Because it can be very stressful. That's probably the most stressful time out here. And we've been doing this for 18 months. Is Every time I go to leave is, will I find a good spot? Will somebody be there? I'm pulling a 30-foot trailer with six rescues. I got to load everything up. I got to, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So that's the most stressful time. So if I can alleviate just a little bit of stress from your travels, then I've done my job. So we come here and you want to find out what the name of the National Forest or BLM land is. So right here, it's a mountain circle, wilderness. I don't even know what that is. That's gray. Oh, not gray. It's like a light gray. So that's state, state land. And then the name of the, the forest I don't know where it's at here, but I, I found it earlier. Where's it at? It's a uh, like route, R O U T T National Forest or something. But it's part of Mount Zirkel is part of the Route National Forest. And I'll show you why I need to know that later on. So here we are, Steamboat Springs. So let's go to the first platform we use. We'll start out with I Overlander. All right. Fantastic platform. It's free. The only limitation that I see from doing dispersed camping research, and I'll show you. Let's go to Steamboat. Steamboat Springs, Colorado. All right, it showed it there. Place types, it's going to default to select all. Uncheck that. All we're looking for is informal campsite and wild camping. Now, Another video I would go through, we're looking for water as well and laundromat, but I'm not worrying about that right now. This is specific to just dispersed camping. We've got two selected. Where are we at? There it is. Okay. So let's, for the example that I'm showing you, let's start on, I think it's Interstate 40 right here because I've already saved some. So click on an icon and it's going to give you details, like a little quick synopsis of this area. We're a full-timers, have a 36-foot class A. Okay, looking good so far. Okay, go to more details. It's going to give you a detailed description of, of whoever stayed there last, I guess. And then it's also going to give you pictures if, they, if somebody uploaded pictures. Additionally, it's going to give you GPS coordinates. These are very important because if I look at this description here and it doesn't tell me there's crackheads living nearby or monsters in the woods or something like that, I'm going to copy this GPS location, come over to my Gaia GPS, paste it into the search bar. It's going to go to these coordinates here. All right. Here I can do a little bit additional research if I wanted to. I can go to layers. I can select satellite with labels. And I'm like, okay, this is a small little off, off little forest road to the side of 302.1 with a dead end exactly what I'm looking for and let me before I forget let me show you the limitation of our overlander this is the only map you get you cannot select or toggle between this map and other maps so you do not have a satellite view with our overlander it is what it is it's a free site it's phenomenal if that's all I got to worry about I'm good I can just go over here to my little map program and use it here so here I, I selected satellite with labels now I can say okay this looks like a pretty good area and let me explain to you what I'm looking for in an area at the end of the day you know I don't have to be by a city with any time fitness that's just a nicety not a necessity because I own my own business and I work full-time and we tra I travel with six dogs I need a spot that is an open area for Starlink number one Number two, I want a spot where nobody else can park beside me. Because one thing I've found out in the 18 months of traveling is people, it's weird. 
I thought people camped to go get privacy, but people really go out there to get a mixture of privacy and be around people. Because I've seen people park right beside you. It's like they, they're scared to be out in the woods by themselves. I don't get it. Anyway, because I do have six dogs, I want to let them out and enjoy themselves. So I don't want a, a spot where somebody else can park beside me. This looks like a little small little dirt road off the primary forest service road with a dead end. I freaking love it. Looks good to me. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a waypoint. Select this waypoint here. I'm going to drag it to where I think it needs to be. I'm going to type in potential spot northeast of or southeast of Steamboat. Okay. I'm going to leave this red here. I'm going to click save. If I drive here next week and I decide to park here, I'm going to go back to this waypoint, select it, click edit, and I'm going to turn it green. So the spots that we've stayed at, even if it's for a day, are green. The spots that are potential spots are red. So right now it's just a potential spot. We'll leave it red. Perfect. All right. Go back over to Overlander. I'll do it over again. I'll do it. Do another spot. I'll click on this right here. Or because I Overlander does not have a good satellite display, I'll come over here. We know this is a Forest Service road. We know this is National Forest Land because if we deselect, let me go back here. If we deselect satellite with labels, we know we're in the green. All this area right here, most all of it, you can camp at for free. Other than campgrounds, and a lot of times there will be rules nearby water. You can't camp within so many camp within so many hundreds of feet of water, stuff like that. But for the most part, you can camp. It's even got a spot here <laughs> on the map called Wild Camping Spot. So anyway, we know we're in a good, we're in the green here. Let's go back to satellite with labels. Here you can start looking again. I know for a fact of my previous research, this is another good spot. There should be a cell tower here. But you can, you can count past this spot here. So just go here and you go back to our overlander. See if anybody spot, camped there before, you know. And then you can get information on that spot. Wherever it's at. There it is right here. So no one's camped there. But someone has camped close to it at Walden Peak. There's another little offshoot, little road to the side. So we'll go here. Right here is where they're at. Where they camped at. That easy. And if you, if you can't look at it. Based on the maps, you can always go here, go to more details, and get the coordinates. Copy the coordinates, come over here, paste the coordinates in here, select there, and there it is. Obviously, it's not exactly right there. It's supposed to be up a little bit, but it is what it is. Go back here. Beautiful forested the mountain area. Easy drive in. Many well-used sites. That, I love that. That tells me there's going to be sites all up and down the road. Mosquitoes, 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 mosquitoes. Still, there's mosquitoes here, so whatever. Go to details. I'm looking for a picture. Okay. Nice. Nice. Then I would come back over here. Save waypoint. Potential. Spot. Southeast of Seamboat. Click save easy as that all right let's close out of our overlander again i don't know if i mentioned this earlier but our overlander you can look for water and laundry and all that other stuff as well so i'm not going to go over that in this video because i just want to focus on dispersed camping because we're at 12 minutes already i want to try to make this as quick as possible let's start let's go from here let's go to campanium so when I first started out, Campinium was my go-to. I'm talking, I lived on Campinium. Loved it. They got bought out probably four or five months ago, and it went to absolute shit. I mean, they got bought out, and it's transitioning over to road trippers or something. It, it got so bad that so many people spoke up. They actually changed everything. Not everything, but a lot of things back the way it was. One of the things they didn't change back is they took out, they deleted the... Uh, it's Angel. The Android app. And I have an Android. A lot of other people have Android. So when you're traveling, they, they're telling us to go to the website, but the website does not have a location icon. You know, when you click on the little location icon, it tells you where you're driving, where you're located at. 
anyway, it's. I wish they'd just go back to the the old Camp Indian, but it is what it is. But I'm going to show you. Springs, Colorado, Colorado. So, because I do have the paid version of Campendium, I'll go up here and I'll select BLM and National Forest. I don't do National Parks. National Parks is more for tourists. It's more, you know, it's like Yellowstone and places like that, Grand Teton, stuff like that. Well, I don't know about Grand, Grand Teton is part of Yellowstone, I believe. Excuse me. But I don't want to go where there's lines and lines of people to see a you know a moose or a bear or something like that. I don't care about all that I want to be able to stay out in the middle of nowhere with some privacy so that's why I always select National Force and BLM land where are we at here once you do that I'm trying to, I'm gonna to try to find I want to send use the same location we've used on Gaia and um, I overlander so here's Steamboat Springs here we are right here this is what we already used. We were just on this on iOverlander. So there's no location here like there was on iOverlander where somebody stayed at, but there's a few other locations up here. So just select the location here, West Walton Creek Dispersed Camping. You can click on that. Again, it's going to have the GPS here. If I look at this and I like it, I'll do the same thing. I'll copy the GPS, come over here, paste it, save it as a red waypoint. Where we at? Okay, Walton. I love it. It's got 23 photos. I love that. I don't like the fact that it's right off of a, a main forest service road. Because just in case my dogs get out of my sight for a second or, or chase a rabbit or something, I don't want them running across the roads because there's a lot of people who drive extremely fast on these roads. Okay, you. the last person who stayed here that updated it on Campendium was in 2022 few years back which is it is what it is you can look at it as a good thing whatever or a bad thing the spur road does look a bit intimidating with this large dip at the entrance we were able to get a fifth wheel all right tells me right there people are taking fifth wheels back there i have a 30 foot travel trailer so i'll be good to go one thing i wanted to add these roads can be very very deceiving because you want to you want to look at elevation as well so if you look at the elevation here and it's like 9,000 feet and you look here and you're like, okay, I want to come here and you select that and all of a sudden it's 9,800 feet, you know you got a pretty uphill climb just to get here. And if it's a crappy road and there's cliffs on the side and it's like a lot of things you got to look at. It We are currently at about 10, over 10,000 elevation. That's what I'm looking for as well is a high elevation. This right here. See that? 52 degrees. I love that. And the dogs love it. So I want to stay as high as possible for the temperature. Campendium. I love I love everything about Campendium. If they just go back to the old one. I love how they got little snapshots of the pictures here. Got the reviews. It has the dates here. A lot of people haven't stayed here in a few years. Here's one in 2023. But I'm just in a little small area. You can zoom out as well. Oh, one thing to note. Go here to price. Select always show free. And under category, select public land. I don't care about RV park. I don't care about overnight parking. I don't care about dump stations. One thing good to know is. I mentioned in another video, I think. Sometimes there's little pull-offs here. Which I already know there are. I don't know exactly where. Let me go here. Hold on. Just from the research I've done, I think right here is one. There's a pull off here, and what people do is they'll, they'll pull off and they'll unhook and they'll start doing some additional um, research on spots. That way you're not pulling. Here's two more pull offs here. That way you're not pulling a 30, 40 foot trailer, and the next thing you know you're going upside of a mountain and there's no turnarounds and it's a dead end. I've been there. I know. I don't make that mistake again. That's with Campendium. Those, that's the basics with Campendium. Let's go to freecampsites.net. I love this right here. To me, it's like the trailer trash version of freaking free camp camping software, and I love it. So find a campsite. Same concept. Steamboat Springs, Colorado. 
And just to let you know, if you like the information I'm providing, do me a favor, like and subscribe, and I'll keep making some more because I just want to try to help people out. I mean, filters, again, in this specific video, I don't care about permits. I don't care about pay. I want free. That's all I want. Do that. So we know Steamboat's here in the middle. In this example, we're looking at Southeast, right off of 40. There it is. And with freecampsites.net, you can select satellite if you wanted to. I don't know how updated the, the uh, photos are, but you can select that. And streets and public land. So, same concept again. You want to select a little icon here. Let's do, hold on. I'm trying to find. I don't know where that one place was, where the uh, water tower right here. That's where that water tower was. And that's where our overlander had a good spot. But we'll just select this for example. Got three reviews. It even gives you a little forecast here. A couple of campsites here all the way to the top. Two pictures. 2023, this area is a nice area, but be warned, the mice are a problem. Okay, yeah, so. I actually saw this a few days ago and these this YouTube channel it's the uh, let me see who they are welcome. welcome if this is your first time I'm Kyle I am one half of the wandering short they do have a lot of good information and it is in this specific instance he provided a ton of information along with video and I love that love that so the wandering shores that's about it on Campendium I mean, not campaigning, but freecampsites.net. So let's go over here to the United States Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management. So first off, don't ever go to the Bureau of Land Management homepage. And I'm going to tell you why. It, the navigation, like with all other government programs, it's shit. And I'm going to tell you. Site search, Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Nothing comes. It comes up. This is just all. Oh, this is just bull crap. Go to visit. If you say okay, I want to go to BLM land in Colorado. Uh, visit. Oh, I want to do some camping. Okay. Click on camping. Just general rules on camping. All right. So you come over here. Okay. There's Colorado here. Let me click on that. Um, choose your adventure. Okay. Let me click on this again. You know, I've done click 15 times. Click down here. Nothing. I want I want specific locations in Colorado I can visit. So you go to the right side, plan your visit. Okay. Now you want to go back to what we looked at earlier. The name of the National Forest or BLM land. Uncheck that. Sarvis Creek Wilderness is south. North is Mount Zirkle. But they're all part of the route R O U T T National Forest. How did how did I find that? I actually went to Google and Googled the route National Forest and BLM land. I could not find that going through here. Or for Forest Service, excuse me. I could not find that going through here. It, it was so convoluted. But the reason you want to go to the Forest Service and the BLM websites is you want to find out what the specific rules are to that location. I found this during the research. These are the BLM rules, all right? And a lot of these are standard rules almost everywhere. What I've seen that changes, sometimes uh, the time frame changes of when you can stay there. This one has a 14 day limit within 30 days. But this one has something very unique. Has another rule here, which they'll never be able to uphold this rule, but it's got to be the stupidest rule I've ever seen. It says you may camp in the forest for recreation, but it may not be your only home even if staying in the forest for less than 14 days. I sold my house and shop and everything 18 months ago. So technically, this is my only home. Technically, by this stupid ass rule, I can't even go there. Technically. Even though, I mean, I'm going to abide by the rules. I'm not going to bother anybody. You know, pick up the trash, all this other stuff. Stay within time, a lot of time period. Technically, by this rule, the way I read it, I can't even go there, which I'm going to go there, but this is stupid, man. 
But it's good to know stuff like that. When you drive into a national forest, a BLM land, a lot of times one of the primary entrances will have a big, huge placard of the trails and the rules and all that stuff. Read that, but also go to the website because that placard doesn't always have the information that you need. And I'll give you an example why. Why I say that is I went to San Juan, no, Salls Creek, dispersed camping spot outside of Durango. And I drove in, I read the entire placard. Matter of fact, I took a picture of it. Got my camp spot, jumped on my motorcycle, started doing some riding. I got stopped. And he's like, where's your pass at? I'm like, my pass? I'm like, it's licensed. I'm insured. You know, he's like, well, you got to have an additional pass just to ride on, on these roads in a national forest. And we got to talk, and he was real cool about it. But And I told him, I said, it's not on that placard or front. None, the, this rule is not on the placard or front. So if you're a new person doing this, you don't know any. I don't know. And he agreed with me. But just, So just keep in mind, not all the rules are always going to be on that placard up front. That's why I wanted to show you, you got to find the, the name of the National Forest and come over here and then find out the specific rules. And you can also go through, it'll show you what the fire, what do you call it, not fire limits, but there's different levels of potential fire fires in the wildlife forest. I've got the name of one, two, three, four, five or something like that. Normally it'll have it on the right hand side. <clears throat> and you can even download specific maps like uh, like I use a lot of motor motorcycle vehicle use maps from here or I'll use them from the uh, Gaia GPS right here in the UM. So that's going to tell me see all these right here because I got a dual sport all these right here are actual motorcycle trails That's all that's all, I'm getting off topic So let me make sure I got everything Again, if you if you like this information, do me a favor, like and subscribe, and I'll keep making more of these videos because I want people to uh, not be as stressed out as I was or I am when I I still get stressed out when I travel because when you're pulling a 30 foot trailer with six dogs and you take the wrong you know turn, it's just me. I don't have somebody help back me up and you know whatever. So it's just me. Let me make sure most of these places are going to be a 14 day limit within 30 days so just keep that in mind some places are different I, I did some research on a place in Arkansas where I'm from I didn't even know this until like a month ago Wichita Wichita National Forest and I got it from a video I forgot the guy's name but you can stay there for 30 days 30 days I mean I had to look at it twice I mean that's cool but oh, it is what it is I don't know if I went over this or not because this is like the third time me doing this video because I keep messing it up. But let me show you where was I at before. Let me show you the little waypoint example we did right here. When I find a potential spot, like we did this earlier for our overlander, let's go to waypoint layers. Let me add satellite with it labels okay go back to the waypoint I'm going to type in potential waypoint whatever so say I'm doing my research on different locations what do I look for I look for an open area number one because I gotta have Starlink because I, I own a I own a business and I work full-time so I, I do everything remotely I gotta have Starlink I don't want to be close to an, a four service road if I can help it now normally if I'm if I have to camp here, I'll pull in to where my door is facing the forest. So when I let the dogs out, we'll we'll be playing in this area versus the road. But normally I won't stay in a place like this. I will stay, let me show you. Where is it at? Right here. This is another spot that I found. Let me turn my waypoints on of what I found earlier. Yeah, yeah. There it is. It's so good, I, I got two locations, but one of them is I was uh, probably showing on another video. So let me archive, archive that one. So this, to me, is perfect. So I'm looking for an open area for my Starlink. Number two, I want an area where somebody cannot park right beside me because I do have six dogs. I'm not going to leash them unless I have to. So I, I want to be out in the middle of nowhere so nobody's got to worry about us. I don't want, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, like here, here was a, it was a potential spot when I first started doing research. 
yes it looks really nice it's flat which not not a big deal open but technically i can pull up here and somebody else can pull up right here and that's saying you know because people for some reason they want to be by other people i don't get it I, I i camp to be away from people to be have privacy there's a ton of people out there that want to be by other people i guess they're scared to be in the forest by themselves i don't know but i'm looking for a spot where really nobody else can camp this is going to be perfect here this is probably going to be the spot i'm going to look for what i'll do is i when i'll drive up here it's only like three and a half hours from us i'll park on one of these little areas that i've already found i don't know where it's at here's one right here yeah see i i got it marked i'll drop my trailer off right here i'll drive back over here come down here and just start doing some scouting so it's open Nobody else can technically park by us. And that's about it. No campsite. Elevation. The elevation looks good. You click on the red icon. We're at 9,500 feet. I, I like to be at 10,000, but it's close enough. That is how we find spots. And those are the type of spots we're looking for. I learned the hard way here being in the Grand Mesa about being around water. And we got a good, we got a beautiful spot right now. But the problem with that is everybody else wants to be around water, so they don't care about parking right beside you. I don't care. After I leave here, I'll never care if I park by water again. I can always drive to it. In the meantime, I want, I want privacy if I can help it. But you can see there's places all, all down this road, like that other uh, reviewer said here on the left, on the right. I got another spot here part picked out. I mean, it's just. Another spot there you can probably go to. I mean, it's just there's another spot past the cell tower you can go to. I mean, I mean, this is gonna be a prime location to do some dispersed camping. Anyway, if you like the information I gave you, like and subscribe. Again, I'm all over the place. I know I talk fast, but I got so much information in my head I'm trying to give it give you in a quickest period of time as possible. Let me know if you have any questions. And if I remember something that I failed to mention, I'll put it in the description. And I hope everybody is having a kick-ass day. Today is Sunday, like I said, I think. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful week. We will probably be in Steamboat Springs Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday of this week. And hopefully we'll be in one of these spots we uh, talked about on the video. All right. Thank you.